Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where we're going to go down a sequel mine shaft today and look at what all the new things you can do inside Dataworks around being a sequel wizard are actually about. So we're going to have a look at how we can do variables and how we can plug things in and how we can parameterize table names and build weird generic queries and how we can use uh, an asterisk in a where statement, which is sheer madness, and I love it. That's the plan today, just to show you a few of the new things that you can do in the world of Dataworks if you are a SQL person. Now, not to say this is the way you should do everything. Again, I, I left the dark days of parameterized SQL behind me to come to the glorious light of PySpark that's parameterized and works really nicely, but it's still nice being able to have good parameterized SQL. And I'll show you how that stuff works. As always, Advancing Spark brought to you by Advancing Analytics, your friendly neighborhood data engineering and AI consultancy. And yeah, if you first time time around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, do come back again. Cool. All right, let's go have a look at things. And ah, oh, oh, sweet memories of opening up a SQL Explorer, writing a load of declares and sets and squiggly bits, and jamming it, jamming it into our SQL queries. That's what we want. That's what we need. Go on. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. We can do it. We can do it. So. I've got a query. Simple query. I grabbed one of the Databricks uh, sample data sets. I cleaned it up a little bit. So I've got a load of custom IDs, a load of products, a load of product names, and we can go and have a bit of a play with this. It's just a generic transactions thing. So I've got select star from my main retail orders, and we want to have a bit of a play with this and make it better. So step number one. I want to create a variable. Now the age old way of doing things. Let's go on. Declare. Customer. Int. Sure. I can do that. Uh, I can then set a value for it. Now, syntax here is a bit weird. I need to say I'm setting a variable. I could actually do that up here as well, but I can, I can skip that step. And then let's grab one of those customer IDs. So I can do that kind of thing. I can say, okay, I want to have customer uh, and I want to set it to a certain value. And actually, I'm already connecting to something. Let's actually go and have a look at that. I'm connecting to a serverless SQL warehouse. Again, that's the new thing that we can do inside of a SQL notebook. We can connect it to the, a SQL serverless runtime and it'll just work. There you go. It wasn't enough. Now turn on. Why not query? We now have a SQL variable called customer. And we can just refer to that as if it was a thing. So SQL value of a customer, it's hard-coded currently to a particular customer value. And come down here and go where customer ID equals customer. And that, nice and easy. There you go. I have filtered my data set to where customer ID equals my customer based on nice, easy little bit of syntax. Now, if I try and run the same thing, that's going to tell me off. I'm like, what? No, that already exists. What are you doing? So similar to most things in Spark, I can't declare a variable if already... Well, I can overwrite variables in Python, but I can't create uh, something if it already exists. But what we can do is declare or replace. Override it. I can have a play around with these. I can change these things. I can move them about. I can play it as I want. So super easy, super simple. You can have a play with these things. We can go a little bit crazy with the syntax and do the, the full you know, kind of SQL style. So I could create or replace variable customer as int default equals. Set it as that value. I can do that. And that's kind of doing the same thing, but it's kind of like the, the long handed way of doing things. I didn't need the equals at default. There we go. Exactly the same thing, just a different, slightly more long winded syntax of doing it. Obviously, I prefer to just declare customer int, but it's fine. Now, it's slightly weird that you have the slight difference in syntax between how you call things a variable or a var or a temporary variable, depending on where you are. Uh, I also need the same if I want to drop that. If you want to get rid of that variable, the similar thing, I need to go drop temporary variable customer. And I can go through and I can delete that temporary variable. I then need to recreate it while I'm at long-handed one. But, you know, normal ways of playing around 
these things work quite nicely. That's pretty good. That's okay. I mean, that's such a way of quickly parameterizing and filtering, filtering SQL queries. Refer to it. Not like T-SQL. I don't have to refer to it with ats and whatnot. But it's just baked in. Refer to it as an object. Don't call it the same thing as an existing table. Probably going to get confusing. So yeah, that's a fairly straightforward example. But we can do fancier things. We can do different things. So next thing is actually, well, why don't we parameterize this? Why don't we turn that into a variable itself? So if you want to want to do write some kind of query where actually you just ran the same logic against different tables to see actually what's going to happen, well, we can do that. So we can go and create this as a new variable. So I can create my table name. Uh, and that's it's going to be what are we going to call that? It's just yeah, just a string. I'm going to wrap that in some quotes to make it a string. There we go. Nice and easy. I don't actually need to tell it it's a string. It's not going to be as hard as SQL. It's going to let me just to find things without a type and go, well, let's let me never assigning a string to it. It's going to be a string, right? Let's be fine. So I've now got a variable that is my table name. I can change this query to actually use that. So there's a key thing called identifier. Identifier. And I can pass in a variable into that. And it'll then work out what table I'm talking about. So I can rerun this. That, that ran successfully. I think that's all happy. I think it already exists. Okay. Well. Ah, okay. Okay. So my table name's happy. I can rerun. Select star from identify table name. Where customer ID equals customer. And I get the same query. So that's quite happily running it against that table. And run it in a new thing so you know I'm not telling you porkies. We can do that. Run the whole select star from my retail table. And again, it's taking in the name that I'm passing as part of that variable and using it. So you can do a whole mix. You can parameterize the name of the things you're querying from. You can parameterize the things that you're putting in where statements or select statements. Again, just using that syntax. Pretty nice. We can do fancier things even more. So maybe I want to create an object here. So I've got that product ID. Uh, and I've got my product name. So we, we can we can turn things. Actually, I'm going to take this one. I want to create a new variable, which is looking at that as a product. I want to take it, you know, kind of create my new... Uh, let's go clear my product is equal to. Uh, and then there's a few things, there's a few functions we can use to create a new, really a complex object, a struct. I'm going to do named struct. And then the two things we're going to give it, I'm going to give it an ID. I'm going to give it a name. So I'm just making a, a little object that I can then use and param use my, basically parameterize my query using an object. So I can take that. I need to add my two values to it. So the two values I'm going to use is to put a product ID there. And I'm going to take that same name, just make sure we get the same one. Uh, IG35, yes. And there we go. I'm going to slap that in there. That is now an object. I didn't wrap that in. Is that going to work? Oh, yeah, that should work. Okay. So I've now got a variable which has a couple of different attributes. Essentially, I can now use two-part naming. So I can use product.id, product.name as how I'm actually filtering things out. So if I want to go and test that, I can do where product ID equals product.name and filter just to that certain product ID. We can go in here where product ID equals product dot name. Uh, <laughs> ID helps if I actually query to the right thing. There we go. Works quite happily. Quite impressively happily um, for doing some slightly more complex things than we would ever have done previously. Now, that's quite nice if I know that's actually a valid product ID. Let me get rid of this thing. There's one thing that came in super recently. Now, honestly, this will only work if you're on the latest runtime. So if you're on Data, uh, Databricks Runtime 15, or if you're on the preview version of a SQL warehouse. So for my warehouse, just to show you, I had to be over here in my warehouse itself. And I had to say it was on preview. I have to be on the latest runtime for this to work. So this is the new thing that's now in there. Uh, if I didn't know, if someone just gave me that and said, oh, hey, 
Can you look up where look at this thing? I'm like, what is that? Is that a is that a customer? Is that an order reference? Is that a product? It, uh, I have no idea what that ID happens to be. I'm like, yep. Yeah. Can you find it? It's one of the use cases I was having a look at one of these latest things where we can now say, well, where this ID is in any column. If that if that value appears anywhere in a particular row, bring it back for us. So I'm just going to alias my table. I'm going to say where that is in. Bring it up a bit. And then just g.star. In any column you happen to find, if you find that ID, bring it back. I'd love to see it. There we go. It was a product ID. Ah, oh, that's what they were talking about. Actually fairly useful. So yeah, no, a few little things that we can have a play with that is actually making quality of life for writing SQL actually that much better. Now I'm using it in a notebook. You don't have to use it in a notebook. You can just use it in the SQL editor and build out essentially kind of big blocks of SQL, the same as we used to do. To get that feeling of nostalgia about writing a gigantic block of complicated SQL, you can do that. I don't know why you would, because you can now use SQL serverless in a notebook and write your code properly. But still, you can now bring these things together. So actually building out some fairly complicated uh, notebooks that are fully parameterized, that are doing some interesting things with parameterization in terms of parameterizing the actual tables you're pulling together, parameterizing things using some fairly complex objects, parameterizing things against any particular column. Yeah. There's been some pretty cool things coming out in SQL recently. There's a few new things in there. Right? There's a few slight quirks in terms of syntax, certainly in terms of when you need to refer to a variable or temporary variable or var. There's a few things about remembering to declare or replace, which has never really been a SQL thing, but remembering to do that and actually get that in there. If you're creating that complex object, remembering name struct. If you're filtering based on a variableized table name, I'd say table variable, different thing. You've got this identifier column to say, hey, I'm trying to tell you something, turn that into a table reference. Yeah, some some quirks about the things that are in there, but actually the things that we can now do to parameterize this stuff and make it super, super useful. Yeah, really cool. Loads of interesting stuff in there. And for once, I thought I'd do a short video, just a quiet little quick look at some of these different things. So our ability to have variables, have complex variables, have parameterized identifiers for different SQL objects, including functions and various other things in there, and the ability to filter based on an asterisk, which is madness, but you can do it. Yeah. Cool. And this is one of the good things that we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of this repeated investment and innovation in the SQL space. So actually, there's some things you can now do that you can't do in a traditional SQL server, which is great because it's enabled by the fact that it's on this very mature, very flexible, very programmatic background of the Spark engine itself. They're just, yeah, interesting stuff you can do. Cool. So I'll drop the links down to the new documentation for things like variables and whatnot down in the description below. But otherwise, that's me. Don't forget to like and subscribe as always, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.